Hello and welcome to the World Talks, where every word matters. I'm Anna Kalczynska. Good evening. Full NATO membership or nothing, says the statement of Ukrainian Foreign Ministry, as the nation reflects on the 30th anniversary of the Budapest Memorandum. Ukraine struggles at the front and Volodymyr Zelensky pursues his diplomatic effort to secure a future for his citizens, having hinted at a possibility of shifting his strategy, suggesting that some of the occupied territories could be temporarily negotiated away in return for a full NATO membership. Joining us today on TVP World to unpack these developments and their implications is uh, Piotr Kashuvara, President of Future for Ukraine Foundation. Hello, good evening, sir. Good, to good have evening. You. Of course, uh, these words by Volodymyr Zelensky come in a context uh, Russia's grinding offensive, uh, Western support, and, uh, uncertainties. But how realistic? is this offer, I mean, securing, um, NATO, securing NATO membership while parts of Ukraine territory may remain uh, under Russian control? It's very hard to say uh, how sure Ukraine could be of defending their territory by uh, NATO countries, because we still don't know what will happen on the um, 20th, after the 20th of January, uh, because probably the United States politics will be very uh, important for the um, future actions uh, by European countries and uh, by the rest of the world. I, uh, what I really see that uh, Ukraine, people in Ukraine are changing their opinions uh, about negotiations, about uh, the um, future of the country, because if we will have a look on the so social um, researches reports from the beginning of 2024, you could barely found uh, find uh, anyone who will be um, accepting um, any territorial uh, losers uh, in Ukraine. And in just a couple of months, we can say it changed a lot. So uh, over 30% of Ukrainian society now it's ready to negotiate, for example, what will happen with Donbass, what will happen with Crimea, uh, what will happen with the rest of the territories like Zaporizhia region or uh, even um, Kherson region, because people are very tired. Uh, the um, huge thing that changed the uh, public opinion in Ukraine were, were the attacks on critical infrastructure like uh, power plants, for example, because it was very tiring for the society. Uh, also, um, Russian moves uh, on at the front line, uh, a lot of losers uh, in Kursk region, for example, uh, Ukraine lost uh, a lot of um, troops, a lot of uh, people as well as, well as Russia. Um, so people in Ukraine, they already uh, see that and uh, I remember from the beginning of the war, uh, President Zelensky said that there will be no negotiations about the territories with Russia ever. And even um, these that we can, we can see now shows us that um, the war is going to the different direction than we believed for a long time that it will uh, end. And probably Ukraine um, have to accept some uh, losers. Uh, President Zelensky started to, uh, um, to, to say that Crimea, uh, maybe it will be um, back to the country uh, after uh, future negotiations. So these are the words. Uh, that we never heard before. So something that is, is changing. That is something is changing. But with a slow but steady progress of uh, the Russian army, the overall, I, th I would say, uh, opinion is that Ukraine is somehow losing the war. So what is the actual situation on the front right now? Actual situation at the front line right now, it's quite difficult. Mm. Ukraine is losing territory every day. The biggest 
problem for uh, the army uh, are the troops. Uh, Ukraine is uh, Ukraine needs people. Ukraine needs soldiers, and uh, unfortunately, it doesn't matter how many more tanks, how many more um, aircrafts, how many more long-range uh, rockets Ukraine will receive. They will still need people who will operate um, with these tanks, uh, for example. So this is a huge problem. If we will have a look on the big dream of negotiations, uh, I mean Kursk region, um, Ukraine in last two months they lost about over one third of this territory. So there is still less and less land that can be nego negotiated uh, in the future. Uh, also, I mean, quite uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I know mm -hmm. that the, the mood may be grim, that is true, but sometimes in the fog of war it is important to notice what is not being said and not being discussed, right? Do you think that uh, talking about possible concessions, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky in reality tries to persuade, and maybe he is discussing such possibilities with his counterparts in the West, to send the NATO troops to Ukraine? Is this option even on the table on the Ukrainian side? Or is Zelensky just waiting for this move from NATO side? I can't imagine um, something like that at this moment of the war. Uh, because this kind of option was on the table many times and Ukraine has been mentioning that uh, not only once, but uh, I have heard about it uh, for a long time. And uh, obviously it, it could help um, because it will be harder uh, for Russia to attack uh, a base or the city where American soldiers, Polish soldiers, German soldiers or any other country soldiers are settled. Obviously, that could help, but I can't imagine for now uh, NATO troops joining the war. Uh, I can imagine something like in Bosnia, for example, um, that uh, some, um, some troops who will uh, care about stabilization of the front line, uh, who will care about... Uh, stop fire, yeah, stopping fire uh, to control if any side is not trying to reopen the war. So but it's some sort already... of blue helmet from United Nations, right? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. That's exactly what I mean. And what is your understanding of Donald Trump's plan on Ukraine? I know everyone probably keeps on asking this question, but probably no one understands what is behind this, this plan that Donald Trump has reported many, many times. On many occasions, he would, he would uh, try to picture it somehow. So um, we know that Mark Rutte went to, um, to see Donald Trump do you think that his view on the perception of the situation and his view on the, on the possibility of a peace plan has changed during last weeks? I think we still don't know what Donald Trump would like to do um, about Ukraine. We exactly know that Donald Trump is very much concentrated on internal uh, politics in the United States. So what I think personally, I think Donald Trump will think about America first. So anything that will give any benefits to, um, to the United States will be uh, the move that Donald Trump will take. And I am pretty sure that now there is a huge brainstorm in the United States with many specialists and they are analyzing what will be better for the United States. I don't really think that uh, Donald Trump and his administration is thinking uh, a lot about Ukraine itself. I think uh, they will analyze it uh, in with the background of international uh, politics of the United States and what will be better like to support Ukraine to hit and damage China or uh, maybe uh, do something something different. So I am pretty sure the strategies are still um, 
in in progress the creating of the strategies is still in progress we can um, we can we can see that donald trump is not very much open uh to continue uh support supporting uh to could to continue to support ukraine um with the weapon for example that much as uh uh, Joe Biden administration has been uh, supporting Ukraine, but um, in the same time, um, Donald Trump uh, is this kind of a politician uh, who can change uh, his opinion and his mind in uh, one day, and it, it's all up to the um, to the United States business. Uh, that's what I what I really think. We definitely know that Russia is not the um, is not on the highest position of the American uh, enemies, uh, economical enemies. I will say uh, the on the first place is China, uh, and unfortunately for us. Uh, Europe is on the second place. Perhaps, perhaps. So, However, in this respect, very important words from Mark Rutte saying to uh, Donald Trump that uh, eventually um, the loss of Ukraine and any um, win on the part of Russia will have a big impact on the United States as well. So we um, we, are, we remember these words and uh, we will see what will make of them Donald Trump. Thank you very much. Piotr Kaszuwara, president of the Future for Ukraine Foundation, was our guest tonight. And that concludes this edition of World Talks. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. And thank you for watching. Please stay tuned to TVP World.